Good morning, everybody, and welcome uh, to this. Well, this is the second webinar we've had in these really weird um, times, so it's especially uh, good to see you, um, or at least I can see you on screen, uh, and I'm seeing some familiar uh, names. Uh, uh, Diana, uh, I, I, think I know we've seen you before. Um, uh, James, too, welcome back. Uh, who else have we got? Um, Magdalena, your name, Roosevelt. Tracy, hi. So we're just waiting for people to come in the door still. Um, you've got time to grab yourself a coffee, make yourself comfortable. We've got an absolutely uh, packed schedule, not least of all because we're going to make it really practical today. Um, we learned uh, quite a lot about what, what you like. Uh, when we ran the workshops back on the 27th of March, we realised that people really enjoyed the interaction. And we thought, well, this is a good opportunity to change course a little. And we're still going to have plenty of explanatory screens, but we're also going to have some interaction. And um, I have Nigel Wood joining me this morning and he's, you're going to meet him in a moment. So um, so uh, I, I'm not sure if I've crammed too much material in and not taken enough account of having other people on screen, but we shall see how it pans out. We might have to skip some material or come back in injury time to re-explain some stuff. Uh, we always aim to answer everybody's questions by at least by sort of half past 10. If you have to leave at quarter past, I absolutely understand. Uh, I know your uh, schedules are precious now. Seemingly, everybody is so much busier than they were before. I think we're fitting more in. But I will carry on after quarter past and uh, with Nigel Field questions that might be left over. And uh, indeed, if there's more explanation required or if I've missed a piece of material out, I'll try and advertise that during the, the main bit of the webinar up till quarter past 10 and then uh, bring that in at the end. So we're slightly feeling our way because we're, we've, we've changed the format a little bit. You might want to consider whether you actually want to take part. We just need one of you here with us uh, to, to do a session, to have a a performance conversation and it will be with Nigel. Nigel's going to have one with me uh, for real live and we'd really like it if one of you could have a uh, performance conversation uh, with Nigel. Now obviously what you'll be doing is taking a, a situation that you have running for yourself at the moment and bring it into the to the studio as it were. I'm just adjusting my camera a little bit. There we go. Yeah so bring it into uh, to this session and and do it with Nigel as your as your other person. So uh, more of that later. I see now it's 29 minutes past. We've got a whole room full of people, lots of people turning up, which is fantastic. Um, oh, gosh, yeah, they're rushing in the door, um, elbowing each other out of the way, uh, which is quite funny, actually. Um, you know, yeah, no one's ended up on the floor yet. So, Nigel, you might want to free up your camera and uh, and say hi, uh, because we'll we'll get started now. It's half past nine. It's the witching hour. Come in, Nigel. Coming on, here I come. <laughs> Where did you go? I, I don't. I couldn't find the button. Morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, oh yeah, there's still people. There's still people coming in, but I think we're we're going to have to get started um, because otherwise we are going to run out of time. So, um, just so you can locate us as a group of people, Nigel, and we have we have uh, six other colleagues. Um, uh, what we do is, and why are we doing these? Well, we, we do these sessions because actually it's uh, when people are meeting us for the first time or when you're meeting any potential supplier or, or, or colleague for the first time, it takes a while to get to know how they function. And so we think these webinars are a really great uh, uh, way for you to understand how we think and how we work. And of course, today it's going to be ever more so because we're going to be getting really uh, practical. Above all, Nigel's and my aim is going to be to get you to think about what you do. Think about how you have these conversations, in particular this time, the performance conversation, what your attitudes toward, towards these conversations are, and to raise your awareness about your particular habits and the effects that you have on the people that are in front of you, whether it's in a a conversation like this or another kind of conversation. Above all, we would love you to take something away today and experiment with it, preferably today. Do something about it. 
as we would say, have a say it moment. Actually say something about what you're thinking to somebody if you think you owe them a, this kind of conversation or maybe something else. Anyway, so there we are. So um, uh, as we said, uh, Nisha, we're going to take turn our cameras off for a second because I want to just introduce the whole the whole topic um so um I just get my my back into back into screen mode for myself get rid of sticky so um performance conversation they sound very they sound very negative don't they and, and I always think uh, that it's it's something that people think is sinister. The word performance is rather is rather loaded, rather negative. And we may we may be thinking, well, you know, crikey, is there another way to do this? Well, yes, I'd like to think that there is. And indeed, it doesn't have to be as sinister um, as we 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 imagine. But there's another question as well. You know, we're in lockdown. People are having variously difficult times. We've all got a lot to tangle with because our circumstances are different. Many of us feel rather trapped at home. Uh, also, many of us are actually finding it OK. I'm very fortunate. Uh, I know Nigel's in the same boat. We tend to do a lot of working from home and we get out in about one or two days a week. But is this a good time to be having a performance conversation? Is it uh, rude or maybe, to be honest, is it too harsh? Well, I would contend that actually um, we've got uh, people out there who depend on us. Um, you have a big problem. You have colleagues and clients who actually need you to keep on performing either as a team member or as somebody who is running a team. And so the people who depend on your product or your service, depend on your company, need you to keep those standards up. And indeed, stopping from or avoiding these kinds of conversations, I think is, well, when supervision is absent, when leadership is absent, it's a bit like, letting the kids get on with it all by themselves. Now, of course, we, for the most part, we will work. Your colleagues around you are responsible, intelligent, grown up human beings. But we all need leadership. And whether you're in a leadership position or not, you have a responsibility, as do I, to look after the quality of what you do and what the people around you do. So the conversations that we're talking about when it comes to performance aren't just about me having it with one of my team, a subordinate, to call it out, unfashionable language now I know. It's also about being able to have conversations with colleagues and performance conversations with your boss as well. And actually, there are consequences to not having these. Not only does quality slip, but also people start to feel disconcerted if we are letting them get away with stuff, because ordinarily, when we're all in the office together, there are standards to be maintained. And what happens when we don't maintain these standards? One of the consequences of not having performance conversations is that uh, people start to talk and bad feelings starts to grow about why so-and-so is allowed to get away with it. Now, if you think that because we're all apart, these evasions or slips in quality or standards are not visible anymore, I would really ask you to question that. People are still very connected. We can still see who's turning up to team meetings and who's not, who's got something to say, who doesn't say anything. So I believe that being resourceful and intelligent creatures that we are, we've started to develop workarounds uh, for uh, these social cues that are missing. So essentially, people will know when we're not having these kinds of conversations. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm not going to apologize for the pun. We could call this tattle. That's terrible. Um, so, yeah, people will talk, will message and attitudes will grow. You just might not see it as 
readily as you might have when you were all we were all face to face. So um, the right ingredients, I'm going to explain really briefly in just two or three minutes. What are the ingredients that belong in this kind of conversation? And then Nigel and I get to get straight into actually having one of them. Now, we have not rehearsed what comes in a minute. Um, I would also say that please bear in mind, uh, I know a lot of people have joined the session since I mentioned this, but we're going to need in about eight minutes, nine minutes time, a volunteer. We need a volunteer to do a practical piece with Nigel. That volunteer needs to have a live situation in their mind, something that is happening at work, a conversation that you need to have, a performance conversation, and would love you to have it with Nigel. Lord only knows there are some overdue ones between him and I, but this time he's going to be having one with me. But if you could have one with Nigel for a few minutes, that would be sensational. So I'll leave that with you for a second. If you could stick your hand up or in the chat pane, volunteer to Nicola and then she will uh, tell you what you need to do in terms of uh, uh, and she'll she'll make sure you're promoted to be able to use your camera and so on and so forth. OK, so now let me explain the ingredients that we think belong in a performance conversation. And I ho I'm hoping that one thing that comes across is that it's really, really simple. However, what we tend to do for the most part is to make it really, really complicated. We are taught at school and at uni and at college, wherever we were educated, to show all working. I think this is a disaster. You know, giving all the justification is not necessary. So here are the things that we really, really need. The first element, and this is in order of occurrence, in chronological order, we have to give people. Uh, the bottom line. What is the conversation is about? The scene set, as Nigel said to me yesterday. What's the bottom line? Bottom line is I'm not very happy about blah. And I wanted to have a conversation with you about it. The second thing we need to get to in, as, in just the fewest possible words is the upside. If we can give the upside about on the same topic or area of functioning, as the downside is about, so much the better. And that's what I I personally prefer that. Find something that the other person has done well to do with that task. The third thing is that we need to obviously get to the downside and we need to get to it quickly. And uh, more in a moment about what that downside might sound like. And hopefully Nigel will give a, a, an example that you can get your teeth into in terms of what qualities did the downside have. The next bit is, of course, the support. And this is really, really important now. It was important face to face. It's even more so now. And the support is what does the next step look like? What piece of help does that person need? to change the thing that we're looking to improve. Now, it might be that you say, go away and think about it have a, and we'll have a conversation tomorrow or this afternoon. Or it may be that it's just a piece of listening and quiet. There and then, whilst the person is doing a bit of thinking and umming and ahhing. And then the the fifth piece is probably the most important. It comes at the end and it's the thank you. I don't know if it's the most important, but I think it's really important to thank them for actually being prepared to have the conversation and be prepared to do the thinking. So those are the those are the elements. Now, um, I'm going to switch all this off, make a bit more uh, space on the screen. And Nigel, uh, we're going to both turn our no, hang on a second, we're both going to turn our cameras on now. And we are going to have that conversation. Now, Nigel said he's got he's been cooking something up. He said he could come up with some stuff. He also told me he'd give me a bit of a heads up, but he didn't. And I mean, that's OK, because yeah, I trust I you. like being put on the spot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially okay. when it's you know, on a webinar and other people. Are right. watching. Well, yeah, but there's no I mean, there's no one. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are a few people here. Um, OK, so, uh, yeah. So we've got it. We've, we've, we've got just a few minutes for this because we, yeah. we want to leave some time. So. <clears throat> Fire away. You wanted to talk to me about something. Yeah, I'd like to talk to you about the way our 
conversations go when we're planning work stuff and talking shop. Okay. okay. Uh, one thing that I really enjoy is that you make those talks conversational. So you're really open to exploring different ideas, just seeing where the flow of the conversation takes us. And that okay. really suits me. Um, I like it a lot and it engages me a lot. Okay, that's important. Okay, thank you. Good. No, thank you. Um, when we're having conversations like that, there are also points where an idea grabs you and you elaborate on that point or concept by providing an example. You describe a scenario of who said what to whom. Okay. At that point, uh, more often than not, I've got what you're talking about already. So I'm and banging on a bit. Yeah. And so um, by providing that extra explanation, um, it's like you're not really interested in checking that I understand and I switch off. OK, so uh, I take the stage and I and I have some interesting thoughts and I want to tell everybody about it. But then that blocks you out. <gasps> Um, that's close. It's not the thought itself. It's the point at which um, I get what you're saying and the example that comes to mind, the extra explanation is unnecessary for me at that okay. point. Okay, that's the turn off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. well, well that, that's mm. pretty straightforward. Uh, yes, I, re I do recognise that. Um, I, I actually really enjoy the explanation and I also want to make the reason I do it is I want to make sure that what I've said before is believable. So and maybe. Yeah, it's not so much justification because I don't think I, I often don't feel I'm rightly or wrong I have to justify, it, but I do think actually I want to talk about because it it's interesting and I've got an interesting example and oh what about this one so yeah I think it probably is a bit self-indulgent there and if you say it's 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 switching you off then that's counterproductive because obviously I don't want to spend time online with you and the others and I'm also thinking about the others now because there's usually three or four others on the on the call okay fine mm -hmm. fair dues okay all right um so what 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 um what can we do about that next time we're well, I tell you what, what what would help me is if i'm going into an explanation that you don't need tell me i'm for my part i'm going to try not to do that i mean i think um uh, you've made the point sufficiently strong for me to think well i ain't doing that again i am uh, the thing that could get in my way is that i'm slightly worried that because i enjoy it and i am a sort of chatty sort of person I could quite miss that, but I I'll see what it's like. I'll see what it's like and we can talk and and you can just keep me up to date as to whether I'm getting anywhere with it. Yeah, we can okay, good. Yeah, we we, we can work on that. Cool. Great. Okay. Thank you. Well that thank, thank you for taking your chin, actually, uh in this format <laughs> as well. <laughs> I won't say what would normally come out of my mouth at this point. <laughs> thank you. All right. So uh, thanks, Nigel. So um, we're now going to have a look at uh, what did you spot? Um, what did you see uh, happening? What did you like or dislike that Nigel did? Chuck that into the, the, the questions tab for the next couple of minutes. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to also be lining up this, the, the next person, but start putting in your observations. Uh, by the way, Nigel, can you see the, the Q&A tab? Uh, yeah, nothing... I can. yeah. Well, I okay, you can. So when something comes up, shout mm. it out uh, to save sure. a bit of time. Um, mm. I might um, just uh, go into the, the the feedback routine that you used um, mm. so well to and just to add get, something to as well about what you were, um, you were asking for for volunteers. Um, yeah. just to explain that um, there would be me working with someone role playing one of your scenarios rather than someone having to think of feedback for me nigel which i was worried it sounded like earlier oh, so, was, so i couldn't i couldn't even get that right <laughs> <laughs> okay yes he's right it's what he said yeah 
OK, so uh, so let me go into this feedback. Gene, if you what did you spot that Nigel did? Uh, what, what was familiar? Did you did did he stick to the steps at all? Did he do what he uh, we said he'd do? Uh, so firstly, the whilst whilst you're cogitating, let me just uh, talk to you a bit about our feedback routine, and also that precious volunteer would love to see somebody uh, uh, having a go at at Nigel. No, not in that way. Having a go with Nigel. So. The first thing about feedback, um, I've got a writing layer here. Here we go. Great. So uh, the first thing that we try and include in any piece of feedback, I'm just finding the correct pen. Is that going to do something? Yeah, there we go. Hey. Is that we you'll notice that Nigel talked about. How he felt. And and that was really meant to serve as the main motivation for me wanting to pay attention to Nigel. You notice it wasn't an opinion, more about that in a moment. So he said, what was the word you used? I think something like switched off. Um, uh, uh, yes, the, um, you, uh, disengaged. Yeah, disengaged. So yeah, switch I, off, I did say switch yeah, off. Yeah, switched off. So the interesting there, yeah, disengaged, um, is a more sort of cerebral thing. So we like, we encourage people to use the name of a feeling because that's what really lodges. He then was very specific to tell me what about, and it's when I, when I give an example and he's already got it. So that's the number two bit. Mm. And, and actually the, the, yeah, the yeah. feeling was, yeah, to, just so that we get this, this uh, right for people. Yeah, the feeling was frustration. So uh, the oh, that's that's interesting. Interesting. I didn't get why yeah oh that's interesting so that really would have made me sit up 50 percent more but i ah, didn't hear it i didn't hear it oh that's interesting in itself isn't it okay did you say yeah blimey that's interesting mm. so i wonder what got in the way there maybe it's because i said it very early on and you were processing hard to hear. yes that's an yeah. interest. That's going to come up. Yeah. So there's something there about the 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 pause <laughs> because you didn't pause after you told me that you were frustrated. So it didn't register. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's really interesting because <clears throat> I could I I had no idea that you'd said you the words frustrated. Mm -hmm. okay. I just thought you were a bit. I'd made you distracted. <laughs> now this bit. Um, this bit I sort of filled in for myself, but this is the why. Why is Nigel having that feeling about that thing? And so that's how we we give feedback. Um, Kevin's um, Kevin Smith has mentioned something. Um, it's a little like what we used to call. <laughs> the, the, I can't say the next word. The SH1T sandwich. Good stuff, bad stuff mm -hmm. and finished with the good stuff. Uh, yes and no, Kevin, in so much as the good stuff is is really is really good. And the good stuff is not that it's actually thanking somebody for having the conversation at all. It's not saying something else good about their work that I agree that I, I, I'm i not keen on. And, and you're right. It used to be called the, the SH1T sandwich. So the first bit has to be genuine and that's another thing about the sandwich that wasn't really truthful very often is people didn't really mean the first bit we really have to mean the first bit and it's got to be specific just as nigel did for me because i knew what was happening in this conversation and so what he said first off um really registered the fact that i do include people and that i do range around so i thought okay that's cool i buy that i believe him so yeah okay um uh uh, Kelvin's uh, said uh, Nigel responded with some good visual I'm listening cues as Paul thought about what he said yeah I thought that too and Nigel actually is a master at that but it's really really important now I think don't you think Nigel mm, yeah absolutely um and uh just uh going going back to uh, Kelvin's uh no sorry uh, Ke Kevin's point about the, the the sandwich the other thing about the sandwich that uh, about ending on a positive for me that it um is distracting it, it sort of takes away from the power of the important bit 
if you end on a high just for the sake of it yeah agreed uh, uh agree and it's almost an uh, an apology i i i always think so like, well i didn't really you know but but you're brilliant and you think yeah well right okay well what was that about <clears throat> yeah good one um but um but thanks for the thought because i think uh, uh kevin i reckon quite a lot of other people thought that and whether you you meant uh, 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 yes you meant that, that it was too much like the sh1t sandwich or not a uh, great point and thanks and it gave us an opportunity to talk so uh and one more thing uh jane uh there's lots more comments coming in now but jane uh is saying i noticed four 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 things four steps i'd like to talk to you about uh what i like about our conversations is three what also happens is and then that was the feedback yeah and you're right jane you're right he did use and and so what can we do about it and then the thank you so yes uh jane reckons you did you did stick uh you did manage manage all the steps something i want to say i'm going to leave the comments for now but thank you for commenting there's lots lots of you have um something about the feedback why does it why does it work so well well one of the one of the things is hang on a second uh where are we yeah um one of the bits is that um it's very brief and it's actually it has i i that's why i'm slightly lost because i had left that i was planning on leaving that all up there we go so it's very brief it's singular there's just one thing that's sticking out that is meaningful and nigel stuck to that uh, although i didn't get the the actual level of his frustration i did hear exactly what he was talking about the second thing is is that uh it's about um it's about feelings and feelings are facts they are rock solid facts that people can easily get hold of opinions don't work so well because they're up for grabs so we take feelings extremely seriously well we all do but we take them seriously because they are actually the fact of the matter and the last bit and this is really really important and name and, and interestingly even nigel being experienced i think fell foul slightly of this this is not a performance conversation nigel um but fell rather foul of this bit which <clears throat> is that we do need to give people an unusual amount of time and maybe especially now maybe for them to be able to process because just like with this screen there was a lot happening there was a lot happening and there was a lot of information around and there weren't especially many words because nigel you were brief but what it didn't allow me to do is to really stand by myself to really focus in on the one thing that nigel wanted me to realize which is that he found it frustrating because that's the real motivation for me wanting to stop giving lots of interesting examples and so that that's a, a, a critical bit this the pause is is not just for effect it's to give them a chance to grasp what's really important about what you've just done okay so hopefully do we have uh nicola do we have a volunteer that we can put in here i wonder i'm going up and down the list uh looking in the chat pane can you see anybody who stuck their hand up um no i don't see anyone paul oh yeah <laughs> then nicholas said we don't have a volunteer it mm -hmm. doesn't matter it's mm -hmm. a shame because it would have been great to do this with somebody else um but i tell you what um i'm going to carry on because we we have actually um steamed ahead because of people's comments i'm going to mention another thing should we should we do mm -hmm. another version of this the other way around sure. instead, yeah, yeah. instead of just, uh, okay you're up for that so <laughs> i should have kept that one for the pause the pause for that one because i thought we had a volunteer anyway so here it is so here's his his mind and i'm going to actually get the get get the, the the steps up again um so that uh, uh people can uh, can keep me keep me true to uh 
uh, what I'm supposed to be doing. Here we are. I think here they are again. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, so it's about, it's a small thing, but it's a feature and it makes me have to work hard. And that's when we're talking. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's about, it's about, it's a, it's a, it's a little thing that I want to raise. One thing I, one thing that comes out of what you do is that you always make me think of something that I had run past. So the negative turns into a positive. I always think, oh, God, I'm glad he said that because I hadn't realized. And in fact, you did it this morning just before we started the webinar. I And I always but I groan. When you say, oh, just one more thing and we're just about to start or something. Oh, and I think we've moved on and I've maybe got a bit bored or I think we've finished. And you come up with something. And I groan. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> yeah, I recognize that. <laughs> um, so <laughs> your thoughts on that one? Um, it uh, is interesting it, in preparing your feedback. Actually, this was um, the the interesting thing I think in in the, uh, preparing it, and I find this often um, that it made me think about my part in our dynamic and i'm saying referring back to your feedback because i recognized some similarities the keenness to add more and talk about things and say something else and that's partly why i haven't said given your feedback before because i can relate to that excitement of wanting to add more and so say when you else. do it so when you, oh that's really mm. i've learned something and you and i've known each other now for i reckon 15 years at least 20 20 okay yeah yeah the years have been kind mm. nigel mm. um one of them. <laughs> you remember where that line comes from in robin hood film where it's obvious that the years have not been kind anyway um because i always think when you do that it's out of caution or actually apprehension rather than excitement so that's why i get fed up ah okay okay so that so what would help it would be to um yeah have that point i, I think i relate better to to or recognize better what you're what you're saying now and i suppose that that's another part of the cautionary element that had occurred to me which is not wanting to rain on your parade in some oh. situations because i recognize what you're saying there and don't want to come across as a uh, moany picky overly detail conscious although i, I know i can <laughs> you've read my mind <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm. okay so you know you're doing it so okay so mm. possibilities yeah, well, it's it's um, I suppose do in terms of uh, my feedback and, and what to do differently. Um, it's um, doing that at the right time, sticking to one thing or what's important, being aware of the timing, and and again, just having had this conversation will help me be more aware of it. Yeah, that really that would really that would really help mm. actually. If I even having had this conversation, we both know about it. Both my bit my contribution which is the long examples and and your contribution which is the extra thoughts around caution or ideas it'd be interesting to see what happens yeah because this is a well-worn path for both of us yeah. terrific interesting. well thank you for taking it on the chin as well i got more out of that conversation than than mm. i thought i would actually mm. yeah likewise yeah thank, thank you, you. And it's interesting as well because it's um, a question that came up earlier. You might want to address later. I don't know what you wanted to do next, Paul. Exactly, but oh, you're um, doing that thing. See. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's one thought that's relevant. Go on. No, no, no. Because um, Tracy earlier said, "What happens if someone doesn't recognise they do something in particular, or goes completely on the defensive?" 
Uh, so there, we we both of us recognised what the other person was saying, and you know we got there with a little bit of com uh, extra explanation for my feedback. So yeah, what are your thoughts on that, Tracy's this Tracy's point about when yeah. someone doesn't recognise it? I think I think the first protocol you won't be uh, surprised to hear this, Nigel, is empathy. So Tracy, if someone's not getting it, uh, Nigel, do that quickly with me now. When um, can you do your bit to me that like you're not getting it? Oh, like I'm not getting. Um, uh, no, I don't do that, Paul. No, what are you talking about? You you sound you you sound uh, surprised, well, puzzled actually. Yeah, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I just don't get it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, take, it's taking me back a little bit. I'm on, yeah. Mm. So that, yeah, that's kind of, it's, it's harder, it's harder to explain if you actually don't see it, Nigel. That, so I'm a bit stuck now. Well, it's, um, uh, I know it's a little bit of a, a, a role play, but I think when defensiveness is, is there, it's that knee-jerk emotional reaction. You, you're taking the yes. sting out of it, you're allowing someone to calm down. Yes. And maybe and people that, will Yeah, and actually I was still in role play there. So Tracy, I would even go wow. as far as saying, when I say I'm a bit stuck now, um, I mean, you were very nice. You came in and helped me at a webinar level. But I would say, well, you know, Tracy, you know, or Nigel, you know, if you can't see it, I'm I'm stuck now. Um, and so then I, my hope would be to actually enlist Nigel's help in unsticking the conversation yeah. um, because he knows I'm not going to let go. <laughs> and it's so a good old pause stuck. again, isn't it? Yes. I'm, I'm stuck. stuck. And it's admission. And it's admission. You know, that's more feedback. Yeah, I am stuck. I'm feeling stuck. I'm I, I don't know where to go. So that's what we do. So firstly, empathy and maybe carry it on until somebody just either says, well, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but you're always banging on as well. And then we think, OK, now we've got it. They're annoyed back to me. Hopefully that helps. Um, uh, Ten oh four. Right. We're going to have to uh, crack on. Um, thanks for the extra e example, Nigel. I'm going to ask you and me to turn both our cameras off so that we can uh get on with the remaining screens um which i have for you uh I've just gone in uh, there we go whoa, whoa i'm going all over the place now enter full screen here we go right so just get the right graphic up on the screen so some do's uh very briefly some do's and in fact nigel you're going to join me in on these i think the first one is yours nigel Come come off mute again. Yeah. So the first <laughs> one is you want, get to, only if you want to, Nigel. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could talk to myself in my room. Um, do get to the bottom line is the is the first one. Um, it's not a mathematical problem. Um, and the feelings bring the feelings in uh, very quickly in the fewest words and try and use a feeling and not some sort of adult thought or construction like uh, disenfranchised. Use you know, uh, left out. Cool. Third do, uh, do keep it really simple and singular. So those are the do's and now some avoids. Uh, the first one I think is mine. Uh, mm. This happens very easily. And you saw that even though Nigel, you heard that even though Nigel was very brief, there was so much information coming at me that I actually missed. I got the main what but i didn't get how strongly he felt about it so be really careful to not deluge the other person with information again particularly now that we're operating remotely definitely yes yeah, second avoid is to avoid giving advice uh so not being in that position of someone saying well what do you think i should do about it yeah. And you'll know that uh, if you, you know, if you if you want a to uh, to not get anything done uh, work wise in the back of a cab, ask the cabbie what he thinks. <laughs> and 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 lastly, um, uh, try and stay away, uh, as Nigel has cautioned me, from the long speeches and the justifications 
uh, just so you know, a matter of a uh, little factoid, Fidel Castro uh, holds the record, the World Guinness Book of Records record for the longest speech to the UN um, uh, when uh, Cuba turned up uh, back in the 60s. It ran to f something like four and a quarter hours. His longest speech um, to his own people, incidentally, was seven hours and 15 minutes. I think he was wow. clean shaven when he began. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> long justifications avoid. All right. So um, any uh, other there are I th there may be some extra questions have come in since yeah, we've been there's uh, speaking. One. Yeah. So, so well, someone's raised a point about um, uh, that that last example we go for. Um, uh, Joe has said saying I'm stuck now. Uh, may open the door for the other person to just go into complete denial. Um, say, well, that's because I don't do it, for example. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch on my camera again. You can if you want to as well. Um, mm. That's an interesting one. What, what I have a I have an instant response, but what's your thought mm. since we have you here, Nigel? Um, well, uh, the, the 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 example that Joe's given there, where the response might be, uh, that's because I don't do it um would be another opportunity for empathy it seems yeah it sounds like a sort of ind indignant response yeah or you how sound, would that you sound, sound if it was me how would that how would that sound well uh, well that's because i don't do it nigel oh you 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 sound um irritated well i am a bit um because you you're 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 saying i'm doing stuff that i'm that i'm not i mean i i, I might sometimes you know add examples but there's nothing wrong with that I see. So, so you're irritated because you're trying to to help, but it seems like what I'm telling you is is unfair. There we go. And so you can see what uh, Joe, uh, Joe, what Nigel's doing there. He goes to empathy, and then empathy has the effect. And you'll have to just try this out. And you probably do it already. But uh, if you make a real study of empathising with people, and, and as Nigel did there, not letting go, not going to more explanation then what people tend to do is to start to open up and start to tell the truth well yeah well you know i'm allowed to give an example aren't i i mean you know it's no harm in that i'm just doing it to and then as nigel comes in and says ah oh, there's a positive intention that's going wrong so this uh, an element that you introduced there nigel was one of generosity these performance conversations are not about pinning somebody down to cause pain to them they're actually about helping somebody to realize that they're spoiling something that they're already doing well. Hence the coming up with the feedback that is the, the upside of the operation that they're doing not so well. And I think having those two, now that I'm explaining it more, is having those two close together is really important. So if this is an important preparation piece of preparation to be done here, it's making sure that your upside is is real it's specific and it's valuable and that you value it because if they don't believe it they'll think you're having a go would you agree with that yeah. Rachel? definitely yeah 100 percent okay um so uh we're, we're 10 10 any other uh questions that have come in no i, I think we've done such an amazing job this 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 uh a uh, few questions today. So I think what we'll probably do is um, go for s the final sort of thoughts um, that we have, the sort of the, the little summary um, that I've concocted here. So the, 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 first, the first of these is that it's, it's actually um, more respectful to speak up. It actually saying something difficult or controversial actually builds trust between people and um although nigel and i think do trust each other uh implicitly now we've worked together for so many years there are still rubs and maybe like people who have known each other for a long time there are still things that rub and but that we tolerate and, and it's fine but actually I think something rather interesting that I didn't expect to come out of this morning's conversations was that I didn't realize that Nigel was wise to what he did. And actually, I didn't realize why he was doing it. 
you know, in 20 years, I never bothered to find out why he kept on adding things. I didn't get it. And it's actually really fundamental to how I see him. So there's a there's a big trust element that can be built there if when we stick our necks out, when we do this rather difficult thing. The second thing that we'd like to leave you with is don't wait. <laughs> you could argue that Nigel and I have grown old and I've waited till now to give him that piece of feedback. I probably thought I had many times. We've spent dozens, if not, God, I don't know, hundreds of hours in the room at the same time facilitating or doing something or thinking or designing. And actually, it's I we, we allow and it is easy to allow time to elapse. Don't don't wait. Do it whilst you're feeling hopeful, not when you've descended into annoyance. And thirdly, brief and specific. I think we've also managed to illustrate that in a positive way. And sort of the flip side of not being brief and specific is that even the crispest messages can get lost. And I would say that now that we are working apart, that we are mediated by these, these sort of electronic links, but they're also sort of separators because they're not real life. And I think we have to get even cleverer at putting messages across in a way that is super clear, unambiguous, and maybe most of all, well-intentioned. We really um, uh, enjoy uh, giving these webinars. Thank you so much uh, for, for coming. Um, we really also like to get your feedback. So if you'd like to get in touch with us and tell us what you, what you thought uh, this morning, if you'd like to tell us the sorts of topics that you'd like us to cover, um, then drop us a line. Uh, also, um, we're going to reach out to you. We're going to ring some of you up and say hi, and uh, and find out what's what's on your mind and uh, and what you're dealing with, and what you'd like us to cover in future. So we'll uh, we'll be reaching out to you and saying hi. But please do pick up the phone or do drop us an email uh, to tell us what you think of this. Also. Uh, it would be great if you could post on uh, on your social media such as you do it. I'm not a massive social media hound, but if you're on LinkedIn uh, or indeed Twitter or any of those ones, if you could just chuck something up and ha hashtag uh, the, the webinar uh, or uh, hashtag us, uh, Paul Fury, hashtag Paul Fury, that would be terrific. Uh, and it helps to spread the word, especially now when I can't traipse into people's offices and say, hi, I'm here, uh, or indeed Nigel and the rest of the gang. So um, the next webinar that we're having, just to tell you that before we part company for this morning, let me just get rid of all these delightful turtles. Um, uh, the next webinar that we're having uh, is on Thursday, the 7th of May, unless Nicola tells me I've totally uh, uh, spoken out of turn and boobed. And I thought we'd make this one um, how to help someone when you can't be there. So you could say it's a kind of extension on today's topic. It might be the bit that when you have to say something really difficult, uh, it might be what happens after that. So how to help someone when you can't be there. Thursday, the 7th of May, a very similar format to this morning. If you have other topics or other angles or a particular angle on this one that you'd like us to know about or you'd like to talk about, and we're very happy to do that, to give some time pro bono, then just get in touch. Uh, and there's a number of us who can have that conversation with you. So that's what's uh, coming uh, next. And I just, yeah, I just want to just want to thank uh, Nigel this morning. Thank you so much uh, for joining and for putting the work in. And of course, uh, uh, Nicola for running all the stuff in the background. She does all the lists and the getting in touch with you and fixing technical stuff and telling people what's going on. So thank you so much, as always, Nicola. 
um, uh, look forward to seeing you next time you come and collect the mail for a couple of minutes. Uh, and to you, I want to thank you for um, trusting us with uh, 45 minutes of your time uh, this Friday morning. And I wish you a fantastic weekend and hopefully see you in a couple of weeks time. Bye for now.